Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is a question from the textbook for the Pure Mathematics P2 International A Level um, at Excel um, Chapter 2 Coordinate Geometry Circles. This is exercise 2D from that textbook question that was asked has been asked by one of my students for me to answer. And this is question 10, all about basically something which we kind of covered already in P1, really, which is where a straight line and a nonlinear kind of um, graph intersect. So the line with equation y equals kx intersects the circle with equation x squared minus 10x plus y squared minus 12y plus 57 equals 0 at two distinct points. Show that 21k squared minus 60k plus 32 is less than 0. And then determine the range of possible values of k. Round your answers to two decimal places. So basically, we have to form this inequality from this information. And when solve the inequality to find the values of k which satisfy that inequality. That's what the question is asking us to do. Now the inequality that we've been given, or sorry, the, the information that we've been given from which we need to form this inequality is about a straight line, y equals kx, intersecting a circle with this equation. Okay, so when you have a, a straight line and a circle, so say here we have a circle, and let's say here we have a straight line. Now, there are three possible scenarios. One of them is the, the straight line does not intersect the, the circle, like something like this. Where the straight line passes, the circle turns around before it actually reaches the line. That's one scenario. Another scenario is that the circle and the line just touch at one place, where the circle is like a tangent to the, 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 the line, sorry, is like a tangent to the circle, where it just brushes past it. So there's like, you could say there's one place where they intersect. And the scenario that we're looking at is that the line intersects the circle in two separate distinct places and that's what we have here two distinct points at which they intersect all right so that's what we 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 basically have this situation here so in order for us to solve a question such as this okay we need to um solve the equation of the circle and the line simultaneously that's what we need to do we need to solve the equation of the circle and the line simultaneously so that's what we're going to do now all right, so how do we solve the equation of the line and the circle simultaneously? Well, we use substitution. Okay, we, we, we substitute the um, equation of the line into the equation of the circle. That's always the easier thing to do, of course. So here, for example, y equals kx. I can replace the y's with kx. That's the simplest way of dealing with it. And you'll end up with this equation, x squared minus 10x. Plus, now instead of y, I'm going to put kx plus kx squared minus 12 times y. Now y is kx, so I'll replace the y with kx again. And plus 57 is equal to 0. Now when I, this equation here, this equation here is the equation that represents the intersection between this line and this circle. Okay, and we know that this equation has to have two solutions. Okay, this is, we can see it's going to be a quadratic equation and it's going to have two solutions. So let's first simplify this and then um, explain further. So you've got x squared minus 10x plus you square all of this, including the k. So it's k squared x squared minus um, 12 times k x plus 57 is equal to 0. Now, I want to have it in the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is the form of a quadratic that we know, which will help us because what we need to do now in, in the next step is we need to show that the discriminant of this is greater than zero. We have, to, we have to state that because there are two distinct solutions, the discriminant of this quadratic equation is going to be equal to, so it's going to be greater than zero. So I need to write it in this form. Now we have two x squared terms, two x terms. So let's like, let me write the x squared terms together first. So x squared plus k squared x squared and the x terms together 
minus 10x minus 12kx. And then I've got my constant plus 57 equals zero. Now what I'm going to do it, so I do now, because I have x squared twice, I'm going to take x squared as a common factor of these two terms. Then I have 1 plus k squared. That's my x squared. So this is like my ax squared. So I can write this as 1 plus k squared, okay, times x squared. So that's my, my a now, my ax squared. I want to find what b is now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this um, also um, in the same kind of way. I will take out the common factor of x. I'm going to write it as plus, and I'll put x. So I'm going to not worry about the minus sign because I want to I want to have a plus b here. So I'll put plus x, and then I'm going to take out that you know. So x times minus 10 gives me minus 10x, and x times minus 12k gives me minus 12kx. This is the same as this minus 10x minus 12kx, and I'm going to write this as plus, and I'm going to put in brackets, minus 10 minus 12k times x. So this is my b. So I have ax squared plus bx, and then I've got my plus 57, which is my c, equals 0. So now, as I mentioned, we know that as there are two solutions, as we have two, as we have two distinct solutions, distinct solutions, we know that, because of that, we know that, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than 0. Okay, I'll just write this up here. b squared minus 4ac has to equal has to be greater than 0. So if we look at this, we have a equals the coefficient of x squared, which is 1 plus k squared, and b equals the coefficient of x, which is minus 10, minus 12k, and c is the constant, which is plus 57 at the end. So it's stuff right, so 57. Okay, so that's 57. And now we can put this into the discriminant. We have b squared, so it's going to be minus 10, minus 12k, all squared. Minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times this times 57. Well, let's do 4 times 57 first. That's 228. So 228 times the bracket 1 plus k squared, and is greater than 0. Just to show you what I did here, um, just in case you're not sure, I'll just write the step for some of you who might not be... That's a b squared, then I did minus 4 times c, 4 times a, which is 1 plus k squared. Sorry, this is a k, this is, the squared is supposed to be inside. That's a mistake there, be very careful about that. It's 1 plus k squared, not 1 plus k all squared. You have to be careful. Okay, so this is b squared minus 4 times a times c, which is 57. So you multiply that by 57 and gives you a greater than zero. So you have b squared minus 4 times a, so 4 times 57 is 228 times c. That's what I did there. But it's good that I wrote that down because we spotted a little mistake. That's actually going to make a, a big difference to the answer. This is 1 plus k squared, not 1 plus k all squared. There's a difference between that, okay, between something like this and something like this. This is b all squared. And this is minus 4 times a times c, and c is 1 plus k squared, where only the k is squared. Okay, now, so when you expand this bracket, you're going to square the first term, which gives you 100. And you're going to do 2 times minus 10 times minus 12, which is going to be 2 times plus 120, uh, plus 200, 2 times plus 120k, which is plus 240k. And then you're going to square the last term, which is going to give you plus 144k squared. Then you're going to have minus 228 and minus 228 times k squared, and that's greater than zero. So we've expanded this bracket. Now we've got an expression, or you know, we can now, um, got this inequality, sorry, that we can now simplify. So we're going to have 148k squared minus, minus 228, uh, minus 228k squared. So you're going to have 144 take away 228 that gives you minus 84 so you have minus 84 k squared the k terms is only 240 k so 240 k and the number terms are 100 minus 228 which is minus 128 is greater than zero now if you look to see what we have to show we have to show that 21 k squared minus 60 k plus 32 is less than zero so you can see here, it's not quite the same. However, um, we can, I can see that 4 is a number that will go into all of these numbers. So if I divide 
both sides of this inequality by negative 4. Okay, first thing we have to be very careful of is when you divide or multiply a, an inequality by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequality sign. So that has to be, become less than. Dividing 0 by minus 4 will stay, keep it at 0. Minus 84 divided by minus 4 is going to be positive 21. So 21k squared. Dividing 240k by minus 4, we're going to get negative. 4 goes into 24, 6 times, so it's 60k. And then uh, minus divided by minus gives you plus. And 4 goes into 12, 3 times, and into 8, 2 times. So we end up with um, 4 goes into yep, 3, 30. Two, that's right, so you have 21k squared, minus 60k, plus 32 is less than 0. And let's see if that's what we had to show. 21k squared, minus 60k, plus 32 is less than 0. Okay, good. So there's the answer for part A. We've shown very clearly how we derive this from the information given in the question. Okay, so that's important for us to realize. We found the equation which represents the intersection between the line and the curve by substituting the equation of the line into the equation of the curve or the circle and then we um, were told that there are two distinct points where they intersect that means there are two distinct solutions okay um, for this equation once we rearrange it so it's ax squared plus bx plus c and then we use the discriminant to tell us to uh, we know that the discriminant must be positive must be greater than zero for this to have two solutions and then we just you know put the values of b b squared minus 4ac into that discriminant and then we rearranged and we simplified until we got what they asked us to get and we finished part a now part b is telling us to basically find the ra range of values of k for which um, determine the range of possible values for k and round the answer to two decimal places so basically they're telling us to solve this inequality that's what they're telling us to do solve this inequality and give you answers for k into two decimal places so to solve a quadratic inequality again this is from p1 this is from chapter i think three of p1 solving quadratic inequalities what we have to do is we have to first find we need to find where this is going to be less than zero which values of k make this whole thing become less than zero so first let's find the values of k which make it equal to zero so let's say 21k squared minus 60k plus 32 is equal to zero we find the values where it equals zero then we can de de determine when the, va the values of k for which it is less than zero okay so now for us to um, solve this equation we could try to factorize however they gave us a clue in the question that factorizing will not be possible because it says sat round your answer to two decimal places which gives us indication that we're going to get an irrational answer so if you see an, a statement like this when you have to solve a quadratic or you see a statement saying give your answers in exact form or, or some some statement that means that then that's an indication that you can't factorize and you shouldn't try to factorize and you should go towards either completing the square or using the quadratic formula um, the way that this looks here I think using the quadratic formula would be a bit easier so I'm going to use a quadratic formula so we know the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a okay so now you need to show a method you can't just put this in your calculator and get the solutions using the uh, function button for mm -hmm. equations mm -hmm. you have to show that you've used the quadratic formula or tried to um, complete the square in this case and if it can be factorized you have to show that you factorized it but anyway in any case we can't factorize this so we're going to use the formula so remember the a is 21 the b here is negative 60 and the c here is 32 so we got to put everything in the right place so you have minus minus 60 which is 60 plus or minus the square root of negative 60 squared don't forget if you're going to put in your calculator put a minus inside this bracket with a 60 minus 4 times a which is 21 times c which is 32 all over all over 2 times a which is 2 times 21 now for showing the quadratic formula, um, you don't really need to write the formula down. But what you need to show is this, that you have put everything in the right place. That's what needs to be shown when you are using the quadratic formula. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the calculator and put everything in the right place. So we've got our fraction, 
60 plus the square root of b squared, which is minus 60 squared. Okay, so it's going to be the same as, as, as 60 squared, but just to show you, you have to be careful to put the minus in the square root if you're going to use the minus in there. Minus 4 times 21. 4 times 21 times 32. All over 2 times 21. Okay, so this will now give us our, our solutions. So we have 30 plus 2 root 57 over 21. So 30 plus 30 plus or minus 2 root 57 over uh, 21. Okay, that's our our solution here. That's one of the solutions. Well, that's, that's both solutions together. We're going to write them separately. So we just use the plus here, not the minus. So the 30 plus 2 root 57 over 21 is one answer. And 30 minus 2 root 57 over 21 is the other answer. We have to give the answers to two decimal places. So this answer, I'm going to press the ST button. It gives me 2.1476. So K is equal to 2.1476. And the other solution we get is K is equal to, when we substitute, when we... Um, Replace the plus here with a minus. It will give us the other solution. So I change that for a minus, and it gives us 30 minus 2 root 57 over 21, as we said. Press the SED button for that, and you get 0 .0, 0 0.7095. 0 0.7095. Let's just um, make sure I wrote that correctly. Yep, okay. So these are the unrounded answers. We want to round them to two decimal places. So you have 2.15 and k equals 0 0.71. So it's two decimal places, does it? Um, yes, it does. Now, we have to now determine where this is less than 0. What we found is the values for which this is greater than 0. So let's take this as our, our k axis. And this is like the value of the discriminant. Okay, this is the value of the discriminant. We want to know when the discriminant is, 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 uh, is, well, actually, it's not the discriminant, it's just we can just call it y for here because we had to modify that. So, this is the value of y. We want to know when this inequality that we found is less than zero. Now, it's less than zero between the values of 0 0.71 and 2.15. Okay, so this, the shape of this is a quadratic, so it's going to look like that. Okay, this is not a graph of the original function or anything like that. This is a graph of basically um, what the discriminant will look like. And we just um, <coughs> modified it because of that minus sign. So this is basically the um, graph of this function here. And we want to know when this graph goes below zero. Now it goes below zero in this area here. That's where it goes below zero. That's where it's below okay zero o above here it's it's above zero like if you find the value here this y value will be zero here the y value will be negative less than zero so between what values of k is that going to give us a zero or going to be negative it's going to be between the values of k between minus zero between sorry 0 0.71 and 2.15 that's the solution to this quadratic inequality okay so 0 0.71 and 2.15 so the solution to this is 0 0.71 is less than k which is less than 2.15 there's the answers to two decimal places and the range of values for which this inequality that we have found from part a is true so we've solved this inequality and we've answered the question so though those are the values of k for which this will have two distinct solutions okay so there's the answer to this question number 10 um other questions you might find, uh, you might want to watch from the chapter 2 of P2 textbook can be found in this playlist that should appear somewhere in this area. Other questions from um, P2 in general, um, past paper questions and whatnot can be found in the playlist over here. You may subscribe to my channel if you wish to from the link that should appear in this area. Thank you for watching and see you soon.